All right, all right, all right. I think we're live. I think we're live. I think we're live here. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? We're still getting used to all this stuff. Oh, let me turn the volume down on this. There we go. I think we got live. Hey, look at that. You get to see my streaming software. We're back on the road again. Ooh, what do I do with Clorox? All right, we got questions already. Hold on, let me set this up so I can read it with my old eyes here. Get this pop-out chat going. Clorox. I'm still thinking about Clorox because I'm probably going to add. I'm waiting for the dust to settle a little bit. Um, I have not. Why is this pop-out chat here not working? Come on now. Come on. All right. What do we got going on? You can see my bridge here. Let me set this up to just moi like that. I think we got me. Hey, so how's it going, everybody? Really quick here before I get started, I want to let you know a little bit of structure, what I'm going to do with this. A little bit different. Going to keep it a little bit shorter. I am going to run through some uh, bridge portfolio buys real quick. We're going to look uh, at my portfolio, which I'm going to show you on Simply Safe Dividends, which you guys can't unfortunately access all the time. And then we're going to have a quick portfolio look see here. And yeah, there I am. I'm watching myself. It's weird. It's on a delay here. I still can't get my head around this that we have um, that we have a, a delay here. So it's confusing me. It's like watching yourself in the past, but you're present and it's like a crazy time loop for a movie. So anyway, we're going to keep this a little shorter. I'm going to run through some material and then I'll take questions at the end. Just kind of want to give this a little bit better structure instead of me just jumping on and saying, hey, let's uh, let's talk about something. OK, let's figure it out. So, uh, yeah, funny. How does my voice sound? Do I sound good? Let's let's see. Let's do this. Oh, there you hear me. I sound all right. All right. There we go. Yeah. So really quickly, if you listen to the podcast, you know that I am going to Good morning, Mr. Greenwell from Denver. I'll respond a couple of quick, quick comments as I'm going through some of this. And uh, yeah, so I've, I'm going to have it up tomorrow. I was going to do this tomorrow, but I have a big job going. I have to be at work for. So we're going to just do this really quick live stream today. I'm going to have a video coming out tomorrow morning, though, where I'm going to start reading the Warren Buffett letters starting way back in 1959, one a week. And it's obviously to his shareholders. Good. I'm glad I sound good. Hey, I'm glad you enjoyed that with the rad dad. Me too. That was my first time recording it. And, you know, I, I we're going to do something like that in the future again. We'll have them back on. And, you know, it's funny. A lot of these smaller YouTuber channels, we don't get love. They don't get love. But we're all knowledgeable individuals. We have something to share. So what was I saying? Oh, the Warren Buffett letters. I was on a job up in Wisconsin. And for years, people have told me we should read Warren Buffett's essays, his letters, listen to the Berkshire shareholder meetings. So I wanted to do just that. I put in Warren Buffett letters. Uh, to his shareholders and I found a channel that did it on YouTube and oh my god it sounded it was awful whoever did it sounded like they were trying to rush through it and get through it as quick as possible like they were being timed so I, I it was unbearable I couldn't listen to it and I decided you know what I'm gonna do the same thing but I'm gonna create a nice little playlist so it'll always be accessible and I'm just gonna go through and read every one of his letters so we've got that coming uh, in the future. So what did I buy in the bridge portfolio? Let me share my portfolio here or share my screen and bring it up here. Interestingly, AT&T paid dividends. So check it out. I received $73.32 from AT&T in dividends and I bought three shares at $24.40, which was $73.20. So my AT&T dividends paid for three more shares. And I know it's been a bit of a hot button Stock people don't like it. They're bagging on it. But you guys that watch the channel know that I'm I guess I'm drinking the Kool-Aid and I am going to stick with with Stanky. I like what he's doing. 
There's been a lot of other CEOs in the past, as I pointed out in the last video, like Bill Stiritz from Ralston Purina and Bill Anders in particular from General Dynamics, that they came in and they cleaned house. They just started getting rid of, of business segments that weren't synergistic. I think that's a word, synergistic. They, they just clean house, got rid of non-core assets, and we've seen this a lot, right, with um, Johnson & Johnson spinning off their non-core asset, the, farm, um, the consumer health. They, uh, they, they want to get away from non-core assets. You had Verizon spinning off, or not spinning off, just selling to Apollo Partners, I think, their, uh, um, what was it, AOL, which I can't believe is still around, and Yahoo and certain things like that. AT&T getting rid of DirecTV. You have GE spinning off segments. So a lot of these companies are trying to get back to basics, which I think is a good thing. And I think it's going to unlock value as far as AT&T goes I'm still kind of deciding what I'm going to do with the Warner Brothers Discovery shares. I'm going to keep a few, but it's going to be a pure play streaming entity, which is really, really cool. Because if you wanted to invest in a pure play streaming company, but not a telecom, well, now you have that choice or investors have that choice. So interesting. I'm probably going to dump a bunch of those and buy more AT&T. Can you guys hear this chair squeaking? I'm buying a new chair. That's it. <laughs> Let me know if you hear my chair squeak. It's driving me up the wall. So this is the last show with this chair. Say goodbye to it. We're going to get a new one. I can't take it. And anyway, so yeah, I, that's pretty cool though. Right there, that's some of the power of dividends. And AT&T's dividend, watch the video um, that I just recently did. Uh, they're not going to be paying that big of a dividend anymore. So this is going to take a bit of a step back. But it's only going to be 40% of their free cash flow which I think they will easily be able to handle that. And yeah, well, just really quick, not a lot this week. I just bought those shares of AT&T, received eighteen fifty six from Verizon, so kind of cool. Both of my telecoms paid on the same day. Bought my share of PepsiCo at one seventy one seventy five. I It was in the 160s for a minute, and I didn't buy it down there, but it's okay. Uh, I'm buying, if you don't know, I'm buying 100 shares a week. I started this experiment 86 weeks ago, going on 87 weeks to get to 100 so I can start selling covered calls. And then I'll probably morph into a little bit, just really quickly showing the covered calls that I'm selling. And Leggett and Platt, as you'll see in a moment here, Leggett and Platt, I bought them specifically because they are below my, uh, the, my current yield on cost is below the current dividend yield. So when you buy a share of a company, you lock in that yield on cost. And I created a portfolio of 10 stocks to show you how crazy it can be with the yield on cost, where some of them, depending on where you buy, your yield on cost can be way higher than the current dividend yield or lower, as you'll see. So I picked 10 stocks, went back five years ago from to February 10th and just put in one share at that price. So theoretically, we'll see what happened if you were to buy a share of these companies five years ago, where your yield on costs would be and a little bit of where you would be up. So um, yeah, I added, you know, maybe, what was that? I think I added about $9 or so of uh, dividend income because on the board there it was right around $24.80 in just in that portfolio, in the bridge portfolio. So really good stuff. You just keep plugging away. The target for this bridge is $6,000 a year. That's the first the first notch we're trying to hit. And by the way, that's what we're doing is financial independence. That's what we're going after is I want to be able to have enough passive income coming in that I can do what I want, when I want, with who I want. And I may still do the job that I'm doing, but I won't know that until... I can have the ability to walk away, but that's some years down the line. And uh, as I always say, I am paying for the financial sins of my younger years. Hey, I'm 44. I really didn't get serious about this stuff till probably about 38, 39. And I've always had an eye toward investing. I've enjoyed it. You know, my story going back with my grandfather, although I never picked his brain and we never, never got into it. So anyway, you're probably tired of looking at this screen. So let's shut that off and go into the bridge here. This is the bridge portfolio. And my yield on cost right off the bat. So this is getting a little bit ahead of where we want to go. But check that out. I like how they show this 4.37%. And the dividend yield is 3.78. Now that's my yield on cost. That's what I'm actually getting is 4.37%. 
because of where I bought. And you'll see here in a minute how that works. The, uh, what do I want to show you why I bought Leggett and Platt? So the reason I bought Leggett and Platt is if I click on the yield on cost tab. No, that's not what I did. Bear with me. Here's Leg. So this is a, another trick you can use if you have such software is to, if you want to know where to buy, uh, my yield on cost for Clorox, for example, who just tumbled, their stock dropped about 20 bucks. My yield on cost is 2.7%, but the current yield is 328 So I can get a much better deal, so to speak, if I were to buy that here. Leggett and Platt, current dividend yield is 4.44, which is really high and nice. And my yield on cost is 4.26. So I picked up that just straggler share of Leggett and Platt. Uh, because it's under undervalued right now if you look at the yield on cost, which their current yield is 26% below the five-year average. So this is something that I'll do is, is if something is below the yield on cost, I like to buy. And if we toggle it the other way, uh, British American Tobacco, I just started buying. So that's really high. A lot of the tobacco companies are traditionally higher. They pay a lot higher dividend yield. Oh, that's not good. So I'm looking at what you guys can see, and my picture is kind of obscuring some of those lower numbers right now, like Merck and Intel. But hey, that's okay, because you can just look at the top. I'll keep that in mind. So that is, that's one little trick that I do, and I guess that can tie into, into the, the what we're going to talk about is the longer you hold a stock and they increase that dividend, as long as they increase in share price, which doesn't always happen, as you'll see, your yield on cost can also increase. And you can have a, I've heard, I think Ian Lopik is, I think he's said his yield on cost for Altria might be at like 18% or because he was buying it in 2008 or nine, something like that. So you can get really high, but just that's a long-term buy and hold mentality. Obviously, it's interesting they give some of these dividend safety scores. Uh, oh, a beginner tip here. One thing you might want to be careful of is, yeah, I'm doing this experiment with Pepsi. So of this portfolio, this is obviously not all of our, we have many different portfolios. This is just this one bridge account I'm okay with is 22.5% of the portfolio. That's really, really high. And if you're a beginner, I would probably say don't go over 5%. As 10% is really stretching it, but you never know what's going to happen. We don't know. Pepsi could go out of business tomorrow. Likely not going to happen, but anything can happen in the world. And if you can think of it, it can happen. So we, um, yeah, we're, we're, trying to do that to generate some extra income with Pepsi. And as we run down here, everything else is not terrible. Altria a little high. Now that one I've been buying a little more aggressively in this portfolio because of the high dividend. But I do believe that they will able be able to keep paying that dividend. And percentage of account, yeah, J&J, &J, Lockheed Martin, we run down the line. So a lot of these yield on costs are still higher. Check out Lockheed Martin dividend yield currently 2.88%, but my basically essentially my dividend yield is 3.32% because of where I bought, which is really powerful. Uh, but obviously, you can see it can go the other way. AT&T 5.94% is my yield on cost, which is really nice. But the current is 8.64. And obviously, we're, that's going to change. So my yield on cost may uh, be a little bit higher after the dust settles a year from now or so and yeah we'll just this is the portfolio one thing i like about simply safe dividends that's really cool is they you can sort by the timeliness and they'll show you what may be undervalued and the way that they're figuring that is by the dividend yield how far below the five-year average is it where clorox their dividend yield is 30 percent uh, i'm sorry above it's undervalued, it's overvalued if it's below, which, watch this, uh, we'll just hit it the other way. I'm sure Pepsi is. So T is uh, timeliness. Where's Pepsi? So Pepsi, the dividend yield is 14% below the five-year average. So that's going to give an indicator that the stock might not be at a great buying point. But I wanted to have 100 shares. And check that out. My yield on cost, 2.91%. 
and the current yield is 2.49. So I think we'll move on to the, um, I think we'll move on to our uh, little example portfolio here. If I, if I want to think of something, I'll jump back into it. So I have my kids here, our SDIRA here. So this yield on cost portfolio I set up, all I did, I picked out some stocks. I went back five years to February 10th. And this is the tip that if you hold, then you will your dividend yield will be higher is what I'm trying to say is that, and all you have to do is hold, just don't sell. Hold, don't sell, collect the dividends, reinvest those dividends. Now, I personally don't like to drip. I prefer to just collect the dividends till I have a good amount. I cut it with new cash as I joke. And then I target deploy it into something I think might be undervalued or a position I'm trying to build. And I help uh, to grow that. So here we go. First up, we'll, uh, we'll just go in, I think this is an order, uh, Apple. Um, the cost per share. So when you see this cost per share column, that is five years ago what the share was at. I just, again, used um, the stock price on February 10th. The closing price was 33.03. So if you bought a share of Apple in February of 2017, it would have been $33 and three cents. I don't know why it shows annual income zero. Oh, because it's not a dollar. Duh. So the yield on cost, look at that 2.66%, which is really good. I usually look for starting yields of 2.5%, which could be a problem because man, I, I turn a blind eye to anything that's around 1% or one and a half. And I really shouldn't because those are probably some of the growthier names and you'll not only get the capital appreciation, but you'll lock in a higher yield on cost as they start raising those dividends, just like Apple did, where Apple's current yield is 0.51%, which is super small and low. But the yield on cost, if you would have bought five years ago, you'd be at 2.66%, which is really nice. Johnson & Johnson, 3.68%. You would have bought one share at 115 bucks. That's moved up a little bit. We're in the 160s now or 170, 163, because I can read here. It is 2.47% uh, current. We picked up Mo. Now check out Mo. Mo has come down. We would have bought that share at 72.42. Now you, you got to factor in that we're getting dividends. We're getting a bunch of dividends from that too. This isn't factored in if you were to reinvest dividends, because also when you reinvest dividends into a company that lowers your um, your cost per share and it might not always be reflected in the software that you use I like these Mayos Mios those little things my kids have the squirt bottles you put in water pretty tasty well you're probably getting ahead of me here so <laughs> Microsoft big one I did the video yes with rad dad yesterday and man I really want more Microsoft, but I always look at that yield, which is currently 0.81%. But I know Duca Prunes is one of our uh, viewers, and he apparently has a bunch of Microsoft that he bought around these levels here. So if you bought five years ago, it was $64 a share, 378% gain on that. But look at that yield on cost, almost 4 percent on Microsoft, who is probably the healthiest company in the entire market. And the current yield is 0.81%, which is so small, you don't even, as a dividend growth investor, it's something I'm not really looking for. So that right there is probably the most powerful example of buying and holding and your yield on cost will just keep going up as they keep increasing those dividends, even if the share price keeps going up because you're literally locking it in back on that day you bought like that's that's beautiful nvidia is really nothing 0.07 percent but still it's gone up 756 percent and your yield on cost is 0.56 percent which is just a nice little bonus pepsi check that out if you would have bought pepsi five years ago at 106 bucks your yield on cost 4.05 percent currently 2.49 just think of that. Imagine if Pepsi's dividend yield was 4%, how many people would be piling into that? And their dividend growth, not terrible, 5%. Uh, Procter & Gamble, almost 4%, currently 2.15. So these look low now. Check out Starbucks. They've 
their yield on their uh, starting yield has gone up because the share price has been coming down, which we're at 95 bucks now. And I'm hoping we get into the 80s because I'd like to buy some more. But you would have bought that share at $56.22. Um, look at basically look at Procter and Gamble too. Just super boring blue chip company would have went up 83% in five years on top of all those dividends that are growing a super high yield on cost and visa visa is very low 0.66% you would have a 1.75% yield on cost and who do we have here exxon mobil see it doesn't always work out there are no guarantees in the stock market and there's always risk I don't care if anyone says you're guaranteed to never lose money. That is not the case. There's always risk, and you have to be comfortable with that. And I guess know your own risk tolerance. So, yeah, that's really cool. You would have, out of these 10 companies, your average yield on cost would be 3.57%. And the current yield, if you were to buy them all again right now today, would only be 1.55%. So that's a really, uh, really cool thing that I think that you should think about when buying for the long term and as dividend growth investors that is the uh, that is the look at that the Pepsi news sorry I'm like a like a fish with the shiny shiny thing yeah Pepsi declared their next dividend no change well that's pretty much it I mean if you <laughs> if you guys have any questions while I'm waiting here why don't we look at the wait latest uh, news look at this they put a note maybe I'll do a video on Clorox they uh, give them a reaffirmation of a safe dividend. That sounds like a video for the future. Uh, Brookfield Renewable grew their dividend 5.3%. Somebody asked about them last week. I think it was BEP. I believe so. Yeah, somebody asked about BEP. And who else? Prudential has jumped up like $5. They are really, really cool. I love them. They increased the dividend. So now that's 1.20%. And you know what? Let's look at my yield on cost with Prudential because that would be very, very timely. There you go. Where's P? Come on, P. Leggett, Lockheed, McDonald's, 3.12%. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Prudential. Look at that. Dude, my, my yield on cost on Prudential is 6.55%. Dividend yield is 4%. I've gained 61% on that. And my average is 21 shares at 73 bucks. And I think it's yeah $118 now. So really cool. I love that. What else news do we got? Pardon my scrolling. Pardon my scrolling. Cigna, I think, uh, I don't think we talked about this. Boosted the dividend 12 cents to $1.12. 79 safe score. BCE, Canadian telecom giant. Increase their dividend to 92 cents. That's their continue the streak of dividends every year since 1949. And Air Products, $1.62. Now they have a smaller yield, I believe. Yeah, if anybody wants to ask questions, go ahead and give me a tip. What's the stock you're looking at? Obviously, I'm buying Pepsi, uh, Leggett, and Platt. I bought them. If you didn't check it out, we did the video with Rad Dad yesterday. So if anybody wants to look at anything, I did get an ad blocker. Um, one of the viewers, I don't remember his name, suggested I get an ad blocker. So I downloaded one and it's a little better. I don't think it'll do anything with these um, these inlaid sites from Google AdSense, which I know because of my website, which we can also check this out. So I did an article on the James Webb Space Telescope. The 13 dividend companies that I found that worked inside the James Webb. I think that's awesome. If you haven't, you can check it out. Just I gave a really brief synopsis. I may do a video on this in the future, but I'm not sure. So you got like L3 Harris, Lockheed, Moog, I think is how you say them, General Dynamics, Emerson Electric, really cool, interesting, even Lind, Linda, Lind PLC gases. So, yeah. That's a really cool article. I'll have a link in the description below when this is wrapped up. And I don't know. CWH. Very nice. Very nice. Let's see what uh, 
Let's see what old Simply, old Simply Safe Dividends has to say about CWH. Camping World. Look at that. You got almost 6%. So nice. Look at that current yield, 6.16. Dividend growth, 100%. So they must have just increased their dividend. Yeah, 2015, it's been a little bit flat for the last three years. One year growth, four years uninterrupted. Nice, 50 cents a share. Okay. Let me look at a couple numbers here. 52 week range. Wow, they're all the way at the bottom of their 52 week range. And yeah, the, the holy grail, kind of like what we want to look for, the at least maybe I shouldn't say holy grail, is you want a high current yield and a low current PE. So you want your current dividend yield above the five and the PE below, which this is just barely below. And all right, free cash flow ratio, 7%. That's pretty, pretty low. So solid earnings payout ratio. Earnings per share, $6.40. All right, sales growth really jumped up. Now, yeah, they've been increasing shares a little bit, but that was a huge buyback from 88.9 million to 37 million. Now they're at 44.4 million shares, 6 billion. Oh, look at Mike. Ah, oh, Mike, you bought uh, you bought Portillo's. He's from Naperville. Hi, Mike in Naperville. I'm down the road from you, not too far, in uh, in the wonderful world of Downers Grove, the old DG. What were we looking at here? Camping World interest coverage ratio. This is one. This is my like my little darling. I always love looking at the ICR. So if you don't know, the interest coverage ratio is when you have. Uh, how much operating income you have coming in that's able to cover every dollar of interest expense. So in this example, Camping World has $13.73 of operating income to cover every $1 of interest expense, which is just very easily able to do. And Mike, you are buying 3M, nice. Ally, Pepsi, still buying my, and Portillo's. That's interesting. This is wild card, Portillo's. What's uh what's their ticker? I know they're not a dividend company. Here, P PTLO, that's right. Yeah, I've thought about buying them too. All of us out here in the Chicagoland area, it's a company. I've met Dick Portillo. I've worked at his house a few times to work on his uh, garage door. All right, free cash flow per share. Yeah, they're just listed. <clears throat> 51 and a half million shares. So they've slightly diluted shareholders by a couple thousand sales only 515 million so they're a small small company i'm gonna go icr all right dollar 54 yeah that's it's definitely got some work to go a 960 million dollar market cap that's nothing and that might be that might be a good one my dbs nice morton matt Morton, not Morton West. Let me see if I can do this here. Pardon me while I go into Streamlabs. You can all help me with this. So I think if I do this, how does, okay. See, now I'm getting yellow on that. This is the fun stuff of live. I have a feeling that I just dumped, dumped, <laughs> just jumped. I just jumped up. ASMR. Hey, we've joked about, I was like, I tell my wife, you should do an ASMR investing channel. All right, does that sound any better? Isn't that freaky what you guys are looking at? Like, woo. <laughs> yeah, this is, the, uh, this is the streaming software I use, just Streamlabs OBS. And just to keep it simple, I'll wait a second. I'm, I don't know if it's too loud now. So I up the, the, uh, up the decibels. Who, who announced the $300 million stock buyback? Was that Portillo's? I think it might be Portillo's we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys are seeing what I what I just did. Anyway, so hopefully that sounds not too loud. I think the, that right down here that yellow is pushing it and being almost too loud will go down just a little bit. Anyway, all right, what were we talking about? Portillo's doing a buyback. If so, that is really cool. So 
I think I look too bright on that. Maybe I should turn that light off. Ah, we'll be wrapping this up in a minute here. Twice as better. Okay, good. Oh, Camping World. Okay. Sorry, I'm doing 500 things at once here. Yeah, good. I love stock buybacks. Warren Buffett, he doesn't like to pay a dividend because he thinks that's not tax efficient for us. But for some people, I mean, he likes to receive them because dividends are paid twice, right? Once at the corporate level and once on our personal income level. So he would rather just buy back shares at attractive prices and uh, invest in the company by buying other businesses and increasing the earnings per share that way. Good. I'm glad it sounds a little better. Morton, Matt. I went to Morton West High School out in Berwyn, Illinois. If y'all are familiar with Svanguli, which I'm sure Mike is familiar with Svanguli. Well, I might wrap this up soon. I mean, there's my ending language. I'll give you guys a few minutes. Why? You want me to look something up? I can look uh, here. Let me look up Camping World. Let me do a little bit of technical analysis. Camping World. Camping World. We went to the Camping World uh, NASCAR race. I want to say Indy 500, which I've been to. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Trying to blow it up. It's too big. You went too big. What do we got? 32 bucks. What do I see? Camping World is way below the moving averages. These are my little indicators. The CCI is curling down. RSI is pointing down. And this down here I like to use the money flow index. Tells you when money's coming in, which could could be indicative of a reversal coming. So looks like that's just starting to curl up on the daily chart. And yeah, that was that broke resistance at 36 bucks. We could see there was uh, or support. I'm sorry, we had support at 36. Now it looks like resistance is 35. And new support is right around what 31 bucks. But let's look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart. Yeah, interesting. So see, it it changes things out when you look at weekly charts because each one of these candlesticks, if you don't know, represents a full week's price activity. And this just tells us the momentum, what people are doing. This is the the technical analysis. I love it. I always say fundamental analysis can tell you what to buy, but the chart or the technical analysis can tell you when to buy. And it looks to me like we are actually at a decent spot, money coming in, RSI going a little bit flat, and we got a V on the CCI. That, yeah, so you can see we're bouncing off the 100-week moving average, which is $31.30. And <clears throat> we had not gone below the 50-week moving average in quite some time. Once it broke that, then the next support here it found was the 100-week. So, yeah, if anyone's looking at Camping World, this might be a good time for a swing trade. If I had my swing trading hat on, I would probably say, yeah, I might buy here and look to sell probably at 37. We wanted to scalp for a few bucks per share. But who knows when that could happen. That could take three, four weeks. And, um, yeah. All righty, everybody. Boy, I don't like that. Hold on, let me do something here. Let me bring my my full my big self up. Let me go up my big self and see what I look like here. If I uh here, let me do this. Oh, it's too bright. Let's see what we look like. It's probably too dark now. Maybe it's too intimate. I'm waiting for myself. Hello everybody. Saturday morning with your local lunatic here. What else do you guys want to talk about before we wrap this up and get at you here? There it goes. Look at this. Oh, that's not too bad. Now I can see myself full screen. Cheers. My cup of blood. Let's see. Hey, that's not too bad. All right. I don't know. <laughs> this is for me now. We're crazy. We're crazy here. Let me know. Say hello. Do you have any questions, any concerns, any comments for the suggestion box? Oh, I don't know if this newest subscriber thing I was playing with, this was on Streamlabs. 
this isn't going to turn into a Streamlabs tutorial, but they uh, supposedly, if somebody subscribes, it is supposed to, it's supposed to uh, change, which I don't think happened because I know I got new subscribers and that didn't change. So I don't know what's going on with that, but it's it's obscured by the uh, YouTube logo. Anyway, anyway, let's see. Never ending highway. Yeah, I think Camping World looks like a good, like a good, uh, let's change this. I think it looks like a good spot to buy right here. And it changed my chart. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll do something on Clorox. Uh, maybe coming this week, people might be looking information on that. Maybe tomorrow night I'll do a really quick video, uh, look into Clorox a little bit. Like I said, I'm working tomorrow, so. All right, well, anyway. I hope you all enjoyed this and that was my tip. So my tip was the longer you hold, the higher your yield on cost will go. Why did I go back to this screen? Let's uh, let's get it back on there. So the longer you hold, the higher your yield on cost goes. And if you would like to see another uh, collab, I guess, I don't know what I want to call it, but if you would like to see me do just talking with somebody else i'll hit them up other youtubers who some of your other youtubers you like <laughs> well within reason i mean i don't think i'll be able to chat with graham stefan or andre jick anytime soon or meet kevin or any of those people there i am and there you are and here we are here in life and we're going to end this right now i thank you I appreciate, I, I, was gonna, I apologize. I don't know what I'm apologizing for. I'm apologizing for being apologetic. Isn't that like a double negative? And this squeaky chair, this is going to be, this is going to go. Or unless I get some WD-40 and invest in that. And uh, yeah, I'll do this again next weekend. We'll jump on. I'll have something, maybe make it even a little shorter. So we're going to go ahead and hit my end button.